come get the tea from me. LVB. Hey everyone and welcome back to What's the Gossip and today I'm joined by horror royalty. I'm joined by Ken Sagos from Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 Dream Warriors and Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4 The Dream Master aka the best in the series. <laughs> How are you doing Ken? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you and thank you for allowing me and wanting me to be a part of the gossip you know which I don't like the gossip but hey I got something to say today all right. Ken I've seen you in a few documentaries. I think you do like to gossip. <laughs> no. Not you. I like to tell the truth. <laughs> I like to tell facts. That's what I like. <laughs> so, Ken, you're on What's the Gossip today because you've actually got a brand new project in the works. Tell us all about it. Well, it's called The Secret Weapon. Yesterday is today. And it's about some bright young kids and Birmingham, Alabama in 1963. And why this is so passionate for me is because it's about the civil rights from the children's point of view. And in 1963, what these children did, it was watched all over the world in every country. And these children gave the power back to the civil rights movement and uplifted young people all over the world not in the United States, but all over the world. And I want to do a short film and hopefully parlay it into a feature film. My last short, The McHenry Trial, won me over 200 awards. So I'm oh my very, God. I'm very passionate about this hearing. So I'm reaching out to the horror fans, uh, my horror fans, and asking them for their help to support me. And in exchange, you can see some wonderful perks and wonderful gifts that I have never done before that I will sign. I will sign an autograph or postcard with a picture from Nightmare 3 and Nightmare 4. I will personally sign it to you and you will get a bookmark. I sign the bookmark and you'll get a wristband that says Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 and 4 and you will get a dog chain. One side says Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, and the other side will say Nightmare on Elm Elm Street Part 4. And you can get all of these. So it's, you know, and I will sign it and send it to you. And where do they have to go to to help you? Where do they go? Is it GoFundMe? You would go. It's not a GoFundMe. I'm Indiegogo. Uh, And the reason is Mm -hmm. it's Indiegogo because Indiegogo makes sure that it's not a scam or anything. I'm not saying anything about anything else. But they uh, they cater to people who wants to do the arts, to do films and short films. And you would go to the Sagos Company dot com. That's my uh, company. It's called the Sagos Company dot com. And if you go on Facebook, my wealth page, the information is up there. But and if you go to all the Nightmare on Elm Street groups, uh, groups, I have posted it in there. But if push comes to shove, just reach out to me on Facebook. It's Ken Sagos on Facebook, isn't it? Ken Sagos on Facebook. And, you know, and I really, really need to support on this here. And so, um, and you can look at the full um, crowdfunder and there's some more gifts that you can have. But primarily, I made something up primarily for the horror fans. That's amazing. How is it, how important is it for you to tell these stories? I think it's important because you see, it's about unity mm. and the world right now is in such a turmoil. And if we can look in, in every situation that has had in life, it has always been at the very end, the children that have come through and saved the day. And so this is a story that is important because we see stories about Dr. King. We see stories about all the great civil rights leaders all over the world. We see stories about them. But we very rarely see the contributions that children made. Mm -hmm. And they go up against this really legendary bigot named Bull Connor. Bull Connor. B-U-L-L-C-O-N-N-O-R. Look him up. He was the Freddy Krueger 
for those kids. Speaking of Freddy Krueger, your f- most famous role, obviously, was Kincaid in the Nightmare on Elm Street series in Dream Warriors and Dream Master. But also you broke ground because you were the first African-American actor to come back in yes. a horror sequel because they didn't kill you off. Yeah, I am the first African-American to ever survive a major horror film and return for a sequel. And the reason that I say major, because in 1973, there was a horror film called Blackula, and there was a part one and part two. But that was like a local film. But internationally, where the whole world saw me, I am the first. And I am grateful because I'm told that that movie gave so many people energy. It said a lot to young people, not just African-Americans, but minorities to everybody. Because you see, my character, he did not want uh, anything that was not reachable. He wanted strength. Hmm. He wanted to be strong. He didn't want magic. He didn't want anything else. He wanted to be strong. And he showed you what to do when you have been pushed into a corner. He didn't, you did not push Kincaid in a corner. He fought back, not just with strength, but with words. He could match Freddy Krueger with words too. How did you get the audition for Nightmare on Street Part 3? They had it in the breakdown. The breakdown is when they sent out notice for actors that this is what they're looking for. And I've told this story so many times and it was like, I didn't want to be there because what they was looking for, I didn't fit. And the day of the audition, it was raining. I did not have a car. I had to go to court before I went to the audition. And when I went to the court, I lost. And I had to catch two buses in the rain to get to an audition that I did not want to be there. So when I got there, it was a long line. And by the time I got into the audition, my attitude showed I didn't want to be there. And to my advantage, that was the attitude they wanted for this character. So even though I didn't look the part, I didn't fit what they were looking for, my attitude and my acting ability is what pulled me through. You were a breath of fresh air in that film as well, weren't you? I I thank you for that. I thank you for that. Because uh, the representation wasn't really there leading up to that point, was it? And I feel like you kind of, the one that broke that door down. I like to, I did, you know, when I was doing the movie, I did not know the power of what I was representing. I did not know that. And like I said, although he was representing the African-Americans, we say that, but in a sense, he was representing kids that was afraid, kids that had been picked on, kids that, you know, did not have the breaks that others had. So he was representing a lot a lot of images, a lot of races and everything. He was represented. He was representing hope. And he was representing do not give up. And if you're going to go down, then you're going to go down fighting. And that's what he represented. How much of Kincaid was you? <laughs> How much was Kincaid with me? I, I like to believe that Chuck Russell, the director, yeah. allowed me to put some of my nuances in there. Because, see, Ken Cade was originally written for a white actor. He wasn't written for a black actor. So when I would read some of the words that was on the pages, I would say, as a black actor, I would not say this. They would not say this. And so he allowed me to say what I would say. And keep in mind, I had never seen the previous Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I did not know what it was about. And because I did not know what it was about, I came in with a completely different attitude about Freddy Krueger, a completely different attitude about everything. And I was looking at something on Facebook just a couple of days ago, and they showed the scene when I was with Lawrence Fishburne and my roommate, Brad, who was being pulled out like a puppet. That was really the first scene that we did. I always, I I had to go back and think because that was the first scene. And the second scene was the scene when we was all together in that room where they had to take me out. So um, he allowed me to be, to let Kincaid possess me. And I think that's what happened. Kincaid possessed Ken Sagos and allowed Kincaid to come out of Ken Sagos with Ken Sagos, if you can understand what I mean. So mm. there was a little of me in there, but there was a whole lot of what a young man would do 
if he was in that position. I remember um, when I watched it when I was like eight years old, I remember going to school the next day using your classic line, you burnt face, pussy. <laughs> hey, hey, so, so, I, so, so I was a bad influence on you. Is that what you're saying? Oh, you started me off. <laughs> <laughs> you led the way. I led the way. Wow. <laughs> you know, so, so, you, so what can I say? I led the way, way to a lot of them. So now that was not in the script. That was when he said, be free and say what you would say. Oh, that's that's iconic. I was screaming when you did that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then the, the film comes out, the number three comes out, and then it's a, a massive, massive success. Like, how yeah. did your life change after that film came out? It, it you know, it went from, <laughs> I remember, it went from where I was living to a nobody to somebody. And I, and I would never forget, I was living in a one um, a bachelor pad, which was one room. And at that time, I would wake up in the morning and people would be looking in my d- window. You know? <laughs> so I so I, I had to move, not that I wanted to move, but I had to move because there was actually people would knocking on my door like at three or four o'clock, three and four o'clock in the mornings, asking me for an autograph trying to prove that I was the guy that knocked me on the other street. And then there was also guys that would challenge me to a fight. And I, so it got to the point that for my safety, I had to move. Oh my God. So then number four comes along where you're like, where's my money? <laughs> Actually, no, because when the, number four, uh, you know, we was going to be in it a lot more, at least Joy and myself was going to be in it. But because Patricia Arquette, did not come back. And I do not know why she did not come back. Um, They want to get rid of the old and get on with the new. So I understood why. As a writer, I understand the process. So that Ken Cade and Joy left a big imprint to others in part three. So they had to say what happened to us before they could move on. So unfortunately, we had to go early, but they didn't give me a whole lot of money, but they gave me what I made for six weeks on the other one to two weeks on this one. So I was okay. Did you not pipe up and say, no, I want to be in all of it? No, you can't say that. I mean, you know, because I don't, as a writer, you don't mess with the artistic values of another writer. And, you know, and, and I would never do that being a writer myself. And, you know, it was like the project that I'm, I'm doing now. I would not want another writer to come in and say, this is what you have to do and stuff like this here. It's like a painter. When you're painting a canvas, you you don't want another painter to come in there and say, put the Hmm. brush over here. And so I I appreciate that and I understand that. So uh, we're in a business of creativity and my creativity may not be your creativity, that's what make us unique because we are artists. You went down like a hero as well. You were the only one in the entire franchise that back chatted him on your way down, didn't you? Yeah, you know what? I found out later because if you remember my last words to him while were, I will see you in hell. I did not know that they was considering making a movie down the line where Ken K came back in the dream. And there was a major fight between Ken K. He was supposed to have been trapped in limbo. And then he was going to come back and he was going to be the heroes of the dream. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah, that, that is what I was told. The reason I said I will see you in hell is because I was going to come back to fight him. I'd have loved to have seen that. That would have been so good. Like the ending of three was like the last third of three is just gold isn't it it's like the highlight of the series so for you to go out so quickly and at the start of part four was a bit of a um a cheap trick really wasn't it i, I didn't want to i know you didn't want to i know I you didn't, didn't want, want to we didn't want you to either <laughs> if, I, if it was up to me i would still be fighting for it. in hindsight you probably should have maybe submitted a few songs for the soundtrack as well or something in it oh, i can't see that would have been a, a, another that would have been a, a ear haul <laughs> and you know robert England, for some reason, think that I can sing. I'm not a singer. Robert England is a character, isn't he? Robert England is 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 one of the. Even though he's he's known, he's popular. 
he is so not looked at for the brilliancy that he is. Oh my God. I've met him and he talks for England, doesn't he? He talks, but hey, if you listen to Robert, and I say this all the time, you listen to Robert for 10 minutes and re- really listen to him and digest what he's saying, it's like you just graduated from Harvard. He has a wealth mm-hmm. of knowledge, of history. He has been in the midst and on the stage in the company of some of the greats greats of all times because you know what what i found out because when i was filming nightmare three that was the time that i was wanting to be a writer and i was writing so i would go and on do my work in the scene and then i would go back to my dressing room and i would write and create because i was wise enough then to know that when this project comes to an end i have to find another project so i want to write my own project and i was up my voice i was up for a role in roger rabbit you remember roger rabbit oh my god yeah and i i couldn't do it because i was on the set all the time so um then um, I would go back and write. So when the documentary came out, it was then that I found out that it was a lot of turmoil that was supposed to have been going on on the set. I never saw any of it. I never experienced any of it. Uh, there may be one or two times that there were some things that I saw that happened, but it didn't bother me because I just thought that it was natural. Mm. But then watching the documentary and everybody talking about it, as as you could see, I don't remember any of it. I couldn't, I you know, I'm I, I can't give you anything because all I remember is that we, um, the producer walked up on a top of the stairs and said it stops here. I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> I had no <laughs> idea what he was talking about until later on, and it was Never Sleep Again documentary that brought connected the dots with me. They're probably too scared to do it around you, Ken, in case, you know, you burn <laughs> face, pussy. No, nah, no, nah, it was nothing like that. I was, I, trust me when I tell you, I was at the bottom of the toe pole. I was not, you know, and I don't think anyone knew that my character at the time was going to be so popular. Did that take you by surprise? Yes, it did. It took me by surprise at the screening, at the first screening that I went to, that everybody was like going wild about my character. So, um, but that was about it. So, but at the time I've never been a person, I've always been an in-house person. So I, I wasn't out there doing what other actors I do. I don't say, I'm going to say what I don't do. I don't party. I don't go out. I, I do enjoy giving back. That's why I have an organization where I help kids. I send kids to camp during the summer. And those things are important to me. I try to do all the things for other people that I didn't have when I was a child. And because we, my parents, my mother could not afford to send me to camp during the summer. It's very important to me to this day yeah. that I try to send a kid to somebody's camp during the summer. So that's where my that's incredible. That's where my head is, and that's and that I think that's why I want to write this story because it's about children. It's about the power of children that they all banded together and they they fought their Freddy Krueger. They went head to head with their Freddy Krueger. So how does it feel to know that you're going to be forever embraced um, for playing such an iconic and important character, not only in horror, but in African-American cinema? I It's great, but I am going to say this, and I always say it, it's not a matter of how I feel of the level that I'm on or the pedestal that I'm on. What is so special to me is people like yourself and people like the hundreds of fans that put me on that pedestal. So I didn't get up there. You all put me up there. And that's why I have respect for you. And that's why I always try my best to give back and appreciate you. I'm more appreciative that I have so many people out there that want to put me on a pedestal to represent. And so I thank you. No, we thank you, Ken. And it's a pleasure having (laughs) you on here. And I've got one fan question because obviously we've done this within five minutes of planning this podcast. Um, Yeah. Well, you know what? We we, we did it because 
I don't think you have to prepare when you're telling the truth. Absolutely. So our fan question comes from Tara Quartz, and she says, do you remember her from the Birmingham Horicon? She was the girl with the red and green striped hat that matched Joe's red and green striped scarf. Does that ring any bells? Yes. Oh, well, she says hi. Tell her I said hello. And send me a message to Facebook. Of course. Now, before we go, Ken, you've got a new Instagram account, haven't you? Yeah, I got. A, I don't know how to do it though, but I'm working <laughs> on it. I was, I was pimping, I'm it, I was pimping you out on it on mine the other day, saying everyone follow Ken. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to learn how to do that because that's not my thing. I'm on, I'm on Facebook, as you want to call it, hustling and begging for people to support my <laughs> event. I really. I really need my horror fans to come out here and support me. Throw me a nickel. <laughs> Throw him a nickel, guys. <laughs> you know, but there's a wonderful, wonderful idol that you can see. And, you know, if you just go to the, the full crowdfunding, you can um, just do $10 or $5. If I can get, you know, come on, just to give me something to help me do my film. You know, and that's that's what I'm, I'm I'm asking for. We'll get that done, Ken. Anyone that wants to help Ken support, I'm going to put the links down below in the description box. And if you go on his Instagram or his Facebook, I think you've got Twitter as well, haven't you, Ken? Got what? Have you got Twitter? To what? Twitter. 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 I, you know, I haven't been on, I, I don't have, I, I think I have Twitter, but I've never been on Twitter. But there's someone else set that up. Now, that is my Twitter. I do, I have that. But if you, you would best be able to um, go to Instagram. I'm trying to work on Instagram and then I'm going to go to Twitter. So, um, but if you want right now, if you want to like send me messages and you can, please, I do answer them. Go through Facebook right now and I will send you the information about what I'm doing and, and all of that. I usually, or I try to get back with everyone. I, I, I can't have long conversations because sometimes I get up to about 100 or 200 messages a day and I can't reach everybody. But you're very quick when you do though, Ken. <laughs> this is like five minutes to put together. I, I do. I, I try. If you can, I'm down here, like I said, I'm trying to get these things done. I'm, I'm earning it. If anybody tell you when you're trying to do something like a, a project and you're trying to raise money, trust me, that's a full-time job. I was up at three o'clock this morning talking to people and I will call you and thank you too. So, <laughs> so <laughs> right, everyone. It. So all the links to support Ken's new project are all in the description box. Hit him up on Facebook, follow his new Instagram, and he'll eventually figure out how to get back to you on there. But until then, yeah. thanks for coming on, Ken. This has been amazing. I really appreciate thank your time. You. Thank you. And I look forward to hearing from you and I'm waiting on your donation, sir. I'm going to do that now in the next 30 seconds once I get off here for you. Just you there, Ken. <laughs> Just for you. Everybody who's listening, thank you so much, really. And thank you in advance if you can help me. And I am asking. I'm Ken Sagos, Ken K. Let's go keep that all over dreamland. Yeah, baby. All right. The burnt face pussy. Well, I can say burnt face pussy. Yeah, of okay, that burnt face pussy. <laughs> Let me make a movie about this burnt face pussy about they tried to hurt these kids, but they kicked his ass back. Yeah, so if you want to help Ken, all the links are in the description box below. And stay tuned for next week's episode. It's the finale of season one of What's the Gossip? It's Lee Come get the tea from me. LVB.